Hello everyone. Yeah, in this session, we are going to start the examples of uh, Arthropoda. In the last session, we studied the characteristic features of Anelida, Arthropoda, and Ascihelminthus. And we also uh, studied the diagrams of all those phylums. So, as I told you yesterday, in the, in the yesterday session, I'll uh, uh, write the examples of uh, phylum arthropoda and those are very important one. They used to ask in the, uh, the, in the question paper, they used to ask for three marks. So, write down my dear students, the examples of phylum arthropoda. The first one is here it has been divided into three types one is economically important animals like organisms in this it has apis which mean honeybee second one is Bombyx, which mean silkworm. Third one is Cephur, which mean lack insect. So, the economically important um, birds or the insects, not bird, it is insect, are as follow Apis. As you know, apis give honey and bombyx. From the bombyx, the silk has been reared and laxifer, which is a lac insect. This lac insect, it is the insect which has been used. The outer coverage, the outer layer of that lac insect uh, utilized for the uh, it uh, uh, like uh, it has been used as a resin which is highly economically important um, thing it is substance is it is resin resin extraction of animal economically important resins the next one is resins are extracted from the laxifer insect or commonly known as lac insect and the next is the second um, example comes under arthropoda phylum is anophilus mosquito culex and edis anophilus so these are the disease causing um, organisms disease causing insects biological mean or biologically it is called as a vector the first one we studied here is economically important animal or uh, uh, make it correct better suitable word for this is insect and the vector insects are anophilus culex and edis anophilus is the mosquito which spread disease which type of disease it spreads malaria type of disease Culex, this is also causes diseases and edis. So, all these are the, uh, what is that, vectors which carry the mm, disease from healthy person, from one person to uh, one more person, from infected person to healthy person. After the vector, it has a gregarious pest. Locusta. A commonly known as locust. So this locusta 
um, grasshopper like insect which is going to spoil the uh, green vegetable all the green vegetable where it has a, a it has the ability it has the power to travel uh, for long distances it can fly for maximum distance and wherever it settle wherever it find the green vegetables or green leaves or green vegetables crops it it used to destroy those um, field all right that's why it has been called as gregarious pest the third one or uh, fourth one is living fossil the living fossil is king crab the king crab has been called as a living fossil the scientific name for this is limulus write this first and then in the bracket in front of this limulus you have to write the king crab all right so these are all the uh, important and uh, very important from the point of examination examples of phylum arthropoda arthro and arthropoda which is which has a maximum species in it two third of the organisms comes under this phylum arthropoda all right so economic important insect vector insects are there gregarious pests are there living fossils are there so these are all the examples for phylum arthropoda next we will see the next phylum the phylum name is mollusca can you give the example for phylum mollusca fresh water mussel and uh, octopus and snail and uh, apple snail or shells all those are examples for phylum mollusca the mollusca these are marine forms the habitat of the mollusca phylum mollusca is marine water marine forms these are marine forms so here it has organ system level of body organization organ system level of body organization and you know very well what does organ system means and the body has three layers triploblastic and these are bilaterally symmetrical with Silom. Silom means they have a body cavity in it. If the body cavity is present, these kind of animals are known as silomate organisms. And the next one is the body uh, is it is not having a segment. These are unsegmented, but the body can be divided into head visceral hum and muscular foot so if i tell like this you it will be a little bit difficult to understand what does it mean so i'm going to draw the diagram so that you will have that diagram you if you see that diagram you will come to know what i am speaking here okay so just consider i am drawing the structure of snail where it has a head and the head contains 
antenna and it has on the body it got the visceral hump hump like like on the roads you used to see the hump like that it got hump and a muscular foot so that is the structure of what snail so what i have written here so these are the internal structure internal part but usually it used to see uh, just a hum and a head a uh, sorry head and a foot this is the foot through that it used to locomote from one place to other place so uh, one more diagram we have like uh, one more example which comes under this phylum mollusca the name of the animal is octopus it too consists of So these are all the suckers which is present on the tentacles what you can manage the diagram now so this is the structure of the octopus and a snail one more diagram i want to draw on the board the name of the diagram is apple snail it is in kannada they used to uh, say like shankha all right so by taking one example uh, that is uh, this snail i want to explain i want to describe the next uh, characters of uh, phylum mollusca as i told you the body can be divisible into three parts one is head visceral hump and muscular foot if you see the outer structure of this snail you cannot find any of the body so the body will be inside it it has been the body has been covered by a, a calcareous exoskeleton so the body is covered by calcareous calcareous exoskeleton means the covered outer shell is covered outer body is covered by a shell so that shell is made of a calcium or calcareous you can say that so just write it visceral hum and coming to the the next layer next to the to the shell consider this is the shell this is shell next to this shell 
the soft spongy layer is present and that layer is known as mantle mantle okay and the next so in uh, next to, to the mantle next to the spongy layer or soft layer it has a cavity this cavity mantle cavity and the next it has an opening which is present at this range so i am going to erase this i'll i'll write one more time so that you can understand that so this is the shell of the animal all right so here it has a, a small opening there it has gills all right so those gills are uh, for the like a respiration and excretion and all so those gills are present at that region in the cavity mantle cavity in, in the in the place of mantle cavity the gills are present okay so those gills are meant for respiration all right and then next next is they used to rasp here here the mouth is present the mouth at the mouth part so in the mouth part it has a rasping structure rasping structure so that it can uh, consume it can rasp over the food so that um, structure is known as radula at the mouth part it has some projections are present which is meant for rasping rasping the food so that structure is known as radula radula okay so this is the visceral sorry muscular food and then sexes are separate all right so sexes are separate these are known as dioecious organism let me write that also and these are oviparous and development is indirect shall i erase this the next is so you have to write all those mantle cavity and uh, gills all those things comes under uh, character number 6 and 7 and at the place of 8 i am going to write the radula radula is present in the mouth mouth region this radula which uh, helps to rasp on the food it has a mantle cavity in the mantle cavity it got the gills which is made for respiration and then next to the shell a spongy and a soft layer is present and that spongy and soft layer is known as mantle okay and the next is sexes are separate sexes are separate means what my dear students male animal is different female animal is different that's why if it is present in if the male and female sex organs are present in only one animal those type of animals are known as hermaphrodite sexes are separate means male snail female snail fail snail both are in different form you here sexes are separate i can write here a dioecious one after the dioecious after this character let me write uh these are oviparous they are going to lay the eggs and development is indirect development is indirect all right so these are all the uh, characteristic features of 
um, phylum mollusca. As I told you, it has a sensory organ known as tentacles. This is also a characteristic feature that you have to mention here. In the re head region, near the head region, it has a sensory tentacles. After the fifth character, you can write or you can add that that uh, uh, descriptive character. So let me uh, explain one more time. The phylum mollusca. This is the second largest phylum of the animal kingdom. The first kingdom is phylum uh, Arthropoda. This is the second largest. Here, all the animals are. Uh, maximum of the animals are marine forms and some of them are terrestrial one and they got organ system level of body organization they have three layers known as outer recto middle meso and inner endoderm and the body can be divided uh, the, the body can be cut into two equal halves by taking a central axis from only one plane and then the body can be divide, divisible into three parts one is head next is visceral hump and the third one is muscular foot and at the head region it has a sensory tentacles next the shell is made of calcareous the shell is made of the shell is known as calcareous next to the shell it has soft and spongy layer known as mantle and next to the, to the mantle it has a cavity in the cavity it got uh, gills the gills are meant for respiration in the mouth region it has a rasping organ known as radula which rasp over the food here the sexes are separate the, the animal is known as dioecious and it lay eggs the mollusca family members are known as voviparous they are going to lay the eggs and here the development is indirect the first give rise to they will first form a larval stage they will come to the larval stage and then they will move on to the next adult one so we will see the examples now the phylum mollusca examples are as follows Pylum, pink tada, sepia, loligo, known as a uh, common nom, no, name is squid, sepia common name is cuttle fish and pink tada common name is pearl oyster and pila common name is apple snail and uh, next is octopus commonly known as devil fish next is aplysia sea hare dentalium commonly known as Tusk shell. Next is Ketopleura, commonly known as Chiton. So, what you have to do? You have to learn the examples of 
all these um, all the examples of phylum mollusca pila pinctada sepia loligo octopus aplysia dentalium ketopura these are the scientific name only genus name they used to give and whatever the species comes under the pila they also belongs to the phylum mollusca in case pila got number of species all those species comes under the phylum mollusca and in bracket i have written the common name for this species and we'll move on to the next phylum the next phylum is echinodermata phylum echinodermata so we will discuss the next phylum the phylum name is echinodermata the echinodermata phylum they consists of as you can see the structure on the board it is nothing but a starfish so the name of this is asterius and this one is ophiura okay so this are what when taking the example of echinodermata will have few descriptive characters of phylum echinodermata here the endoskeleton is endo skeleton is made of or it is of calcareous hence the name echino hence the name is called as is known as echinus which literally means spiny bodied spiny bodied if you might have seen the starfishes when you go to the beaches and all there you'll find the starfishes if you take the starfish on your hand you feel somewhat like uh, like uh, prickly uh, kind of uh, feeling so those are because of having spines on the body and the organ it possess organ system level of body organization i forgot to mention the habitat of this echinodermata most of them are or all the echinoderms are marine forms okay this is r and they possess triploblastic and coelomate and adults are radially symmetrical and larvas are bilaterally symmetrical now what does it mean radially symmetrical means adults so this is the adult animal you can cut the animal from any plane any part of the body you can cut the animal uh, you will get the two equal halves so that does, that means radially symmetrical now what is uh, larva is a bilateral symmetrical animal larva will be somewhat larvas of echinoderms will be somewhat like this and uh, 
they have we have to cut the animal some uh, of, of some more uh, organs are there uh, like uh, this is not that much important my dear students that's why i am not drawing this in a, in a clear manner so just imagine just uh, look at this diagram so this is nothing but somewhat the larva of echinoderms looks like this okay so if the larva is like this how we have to cut the animal so if we want to see the internal structure of the animal of particularly from one plane we have to take the central axis so that we will get we will get the two equal halves that's why they have given the larva is bilaterally symmetrical and the adult is radially symmetrical and it has a unique feature known as water vascular system so that vas water va vascular system helps the body for respiration excretion and uh, food capture and also it helps to transport this is known as a transport of food from one place to other place so the here the digestive system is complete digestive system is complete it means what it has two openings consider this is the dorsal surface the upper surface of animal at the upper surface or at the dorsal surface it has the opening that opening known as anus on the ventral surface it has the mouth mouth is at ventral surface ventral or lower surface and anus is at dorsal surface or upper surface and digestive system is complete the excretory system is absent here the excretory system is absent and the um, next is next i'll write here so that will means the seventh character eighth one is sexes are separate it means they are dioecious and fertilization is external development is indirect so these are all the characteristic features of echinodermata if you feel some messy on the board let me uh, uh, explain let me tell one more time all the characteristic features one by one just note down they are truly marine form and the endoskeleton uh, so this um, character why i have written that character in the first point because why it is known as echinoderm do it have any special uh, feature uh, for, so, so that the name echinodermata came yes it is the endoskeleton is calcareous it means they are echinus echinus means spiny body that's why the name came as echinodermata they have organ system level of body organization it means they have organ systems the body have three germ layers 
it is a triploblastic they have true cavity true body cavity that's why it is known as coelomate the adults are radially symmetrical and the larvas are bilaterally symmetrical and they have a special unique feature known as water vascular system the water vascular system uh, helps the body for the respiration excretion they don't they do not have exact excretory system through that water vascular system they used to excrete the waste material they it used it has been used for the capturing of food and the food can be transported from one place to another place through this water vascular system and they have a complete digestive system with anus at the dorsal surface and mouth at the ventral surface and sexes are separate that's why it is known as dioecious and fertilization is external and development is indirect so these are all the characteristic features of echinodermata now coming to the examples of echinodermata examples are asterius asterius common name is starfish second example is echinus common name is sea urchin third example is antedon sea lily common name is sea lily fourth one is cucumeria common name is sea cucumber the last one is ophiura if you put on the national geography channel you'll get all these um, animals in the tv itself uh, and so uh, let me tell the odd uh, examples of echinodermata so this is the asterius the example for, uh, genus of starfish the scientific name only genus they have given genus asterius the common name is starfish the second one is echinus echinus common name is sea urchin antedon sea lily cucumeria sea cucumber ophiura brittle star so these are all the examples of echinodermata hope you understood the today's concept if you have any doubt please ask me thank you